Well, welcome to our CryEngine Programming Lecture Series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor. And this is lecture is an important one. It's lecture seven on XML structure. And before you did this, you should have watched the previous lecture for the rationale for doing this one. Okay. Um, our topic is XML and the structure and applications of the extensible markup language called XML. There are files. So the purpose of this lecture is to get some technical information about what an XML file is and mainly to understand what some of its terminology means. The simple text file with the big muscle, that's XML. It's used to store and transmit information. That's what it does. And of course, in games, games contain tons of information. So they should have tons of XML files. Now, what is XML? The extensible markup language is a markup language that defines a set of rules for encoding documents in a format that is both human readable and machine readable. Look, here's an XML document, just simple text, nothing more. So let's look at the format. It says memo. This is a memo. The title of the memo is my memo. The message in the memo is hello world. So this is human readable and we're being promised that it's also machine readable, which of course we'll find out that it is. It is defined in the XML 1.0 specification produced by the W3D and several other related specifications, all free and open standards. The W3C is the World Wide Web Consortium. It makes recommendations for all different kinds of things done on the internet with the World Wide Web. And of course, this, for those of you that have done uh, HTML stuff, this looks like HTML, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it, it uses the same concepts. Uh, XML 1.0 became a W3C recommendation on February 10th, 1998. So as you can see, it's been around for a while. It's very stable. There, there's, uh, to my knowledge, and I've used it a lot, there's uh, no bugs in it, unless you put the bugs in yourself. So the design goals of XML emphasize simplicity, and hopefully that will, that's what we've seen so far, generality, uh, you can be as general as you want to about it, and usability over the internet. And there's nothing that you can send faster over the internet that's human readable than simple text. It, it doesn't have anything that's bold, nothing's italics or anything like that. It's just all simple plain text. It is a textual data format with strong support via Unicode for the languages of the world. So you can use other languages besides English in it. And this is, uh, it says HTML, but it's actually also uh, set up like XML. Although the design of XML focuses on documents, it's widely used for the representation of arbitrary data structures, for example, in web services, and for example, in many, many computer games. Okay, now, if you recall, remember is about lecture three, it's used to store a cryengine flow graphs. Remember we made a, a flow graph, we called it the message XML, and it was stored as an XML document by the, the CryEngine. And, and uh, I demonstrated that you could open it with any simple text editor. Remember, we highlighted it. We right-clicked and we said open with, and we said open with notepad. Okay, and then when we opened it with notepad, we got this human readable code here. Now you might say, yeah, I could read it, but I don't know if I understand it. Well, that's okay for now. We're just starting out, but that's the point. Uh, that it is human readable, graph and description, it's all in English. And, and there we have all these, uh, here's hello world, that was the message that was displayed, and this right here was the comment that we had, okay? All right, so now let's go and look at the key features of XML. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, as we've said before. XML was designed to carry data, not to display data. XML is designed to be self-descriptive, which it does. We saw a memo, and we saw a title, we saw a message. XML is a W3C recommendation. We've already covered that, but those are the key features of XML. 
Let's look at some definitions. Let's look at the definition of a tag. Text that is enclosed by the less than and the greater than symbols, angle brackets. This is a tag, an XML tag. My tag is the tag name. So this is a tag name inside the tag. The tag name should not have any spaces and should be confined to text characters. Like all these are tags. This, the tag name here is HTML. The tag name here is document. The tag name here is my stuff. The tag name here is input. Okay, that's the definition of a tag. Now, tag pairs in XML, tags come in pairs. There is the opening tag and the closing tag. There is the opening tag, my tag. Over here is the closing tag for my tag. In XML, every opening tag must, must have a closing tag. The closing tag is identical to the opening tag with the exception of a forward slash. The way I tell a closing tag from an opening tag is with the forward slash. The opening tag comes first, the closing tag comes last. XML tags are case sensitive. The case of an opening and closing tag must be identical. In other words, here's an opening tag called mine that's all in lowercase. The closing tag must all be in lowercase. This is the content. Here, mine is all in uppercase, then the closing tag must be in uppercase. Here, the tag name mine, the first letter is uh, capitalized, and the rest is not. The closing tag must be identically the same way. This is not necessarily true in HTML. In XHTML it is, but in XML it always is. Now, up here, we're defining, we're going to define what is an element. This definition is very important because the word element is used over and over again when we're talking about XML documents. An XML element is the opening tag, the content, and the closing tag. What you see here is the my tag element. All of this right here is an XML element. This is the opening tag, including the content between the tags and the closing tag. And the name of the element is the, is the tag name. So we say this is the my tag element. And we can have elements with the same same uh, identifiers, uh, the same tag names if we wish. Uh, and, and you might say, well, that's confusing. Not necessarily. You'll see why. Okay. So remember, that's what an element is. Here's some rules for naming uh, tags in XML. XML elements must follow these naming rules, okay? Names can contain letters, numbers, and other characters. All right, that's cool. Names cannot start with a number or punctuation character. All right, that's good to know. Names cannot start with the letters XML or XML or XML, etc. As a matter of fact, don't use this at all in any names. Names cannot contain spaces. Any name can be used. No words are reserved. Like, for example, in HTML, H1 is reserved. For, it means something. It means to display the contents in the, in the largest font size you can. Body, uh, that means something, the body tag. But in XML, there are no reserved words. You can use any descriptive terms that you wish uh, for a tag name in XML. Best naming practices for tags. Make names descriptive like first underscore name uh, or last underscore name. Names should be short and simple like this, program underscore title, not like this, the underscore title, underscore of, underscore my, underscore great, underscore program, not like that. Avoid the dash characters. If you're naming something first dash name, some software may think you want to subtract name from first. They'll take that as a subtraction sign. So even though you can use it, don't. Avoid the period. In, in, in your names. Because if you're naming something first dot name or first period name, some software may think that name is a property of the object first. And, and for those of you that had object-oriented programming, you know the dot operator is used to describe uh, properties and methods uh, for objects in object-oriented programming. Avoid the colon characters. Of course, colons are reserved but used for something called namespaces. And we'll be covering namespaces later on. 
XML documents often have a corresponding database. And uh, we'll sh uh, show you an example of that in, in the next lecture. A good practice is to use the naming rules of your database for the elements in the XML document. Non-English letters like these are perfectly legal in XML. You can use them. But watch out for problems if your software vendor doesn't support them. So the point is, if you're going to use non-English letters in, in your XML uh, tag names, make sure that the software that they're going to be uh, uh, used with uh, works with them. That's basically what that means. Okay, now, XML attributes. Attributes provide additional information about an element. Like, for example, here is a tag, an opening tag, student. It contains an attribute which gives an ID for the student. Its ID equals 158. In the above example, student is the tag name and follows all the rules for an XML tag name. Does it not? It has no spaces. doesn't start with XML and so on. ID is the attribute identifier, and 158 is the value assigned to the ID. So this from here, whoops, I didn't mean to click on that. I'm sorry. Uh, let me back up here. Uh, this, all of this from here, from where ID is, all the way through the equal sign and everything, that's the attribute. Attributes always come in value pairs, like ID. You can use any legal uh, identifier that you want for, for the, uh, for the uh, attribute. It could be uh, uh, number. It could be uh, student ID or whatever you wanted, as long as it follows the same naming rules as the tag name. The value must always be enclosed in quotation marks, either the double quotation marks or the single quotation marks. A single XML tag may have any number of attributes, each which separated by a space. So here's student, ID is equal to 158, GPA is equal to 3.58, John Smith, student. Closing tags never contain attributes. So this right here, from student to this, is the opening tag. This right here is the closing tag. This right here, John Smith, is the content. All of this from here all the way over to here is the student element. This is an element. The, this is an attribute. ID equals 158. This is an attribute. GPA equals 3.58. Okay? So hopefully some of this terminology is beginning to stick. The root element. Let's see what a root element is. All XML documents must have a root element. All XML documents. A root element contains all the other elements in an XML document. For example, in the above example, memo is the root element. Memo. There's the opening tag for memo. Look where the closing tag is. It, it ends. It ends the document. The opening tag of the root element starts the document. The ending tag of the root element ends the document. Everything else, all the other elements are contained within the root element. Don't forget an element is the opening tag with its corresponding closing tag. Note that all the other elements are between the opening and closing tags. The root element memo and forward slash memo. Here's another one. Game ID equals FPS version V.0. Game right here. Here's the opening tag. Here's the closing tag. Remember the closing tag does, never contains any attributes. So all the other elements within this XML document are contained within the root element. This is the rule for all XML documents. In the above example, game is the root element. Note again that all the other elements are contained between the opening and closing tags of this root element. Note also that closing tags do not contain any attributes. Here's an opening tag here for uh, release. Uh, date equals that. That is the attribute. And here is the closing tag for release, forward slash release. Okay. So that's the root element. All XML must have root element. So that, that concludes this lecture for 
some of the basic building blocks of an XML document. On the next one, we'll see some more uh, uh, concepts that are needed for XML documents, and we'll also begin to see how we can use the Cry Engine to help us with some of this stuff. So feel free to leave comments and suggestions as we continue this lecture series. After we finish here, I'll stay on to answer any questions or to go back over anything that we've covered. Okay, thanks for your attention.